here we go again. Manchester United's Europa League journey for the 2024-25 season begins this evening with a match against FC Twente from the Netherlands at Old Trafford. Although United couldn't secure a win in their last match against Crystal Palace, the team has returned to action positively after the September international break. Strong victories over Southampton and Barnsley have lifted the mood, with several key players returning from injury. Rasmus Hoyland recently regained fitness and came on as a substitute in the Crystal Palace game, while Mason Mount was also available on the bench. Both Hodgland and Mount could be in line to start tonight as manager Eric Ten Hag prepares to face FC Twente, the club he represented over 200 times during his playing career. In addition, defender Victor Lindelof has returned to training, making him another option for the match. Tyrell Malaysia also took part in recent warm-ups, showing progress in his recovery. Malaysia is one of three left-backs named in United's Europa League squad, alongside Luke Shaw, who is still recovering from a calf injury, and 17-year-old Harry Amass, a rising talent at the club. Four of United's summer signings are expected to make their Europa League debuts soon. However, Lenny Yoro is still working on his recovery from a foot injury sustained during the pre-season tour, which required surgery. The young French defender is part of the squad for the Europa League's new format, which consists of eight matches running until January. With Eric Ten Hag's experience and knowledge of FC 20, having played there across three spells, he will understand the challenges the Dutch side could pose. 20 is known for their attacking style, and they will look to test United's defense early on. United's backline, possibly boosted by the return of Lindelof and Malaysia, will need to stay alert to avoid any surprises from their energetic opponents. On the attacking front, the return of key players like Hoyland and Mount offers United greater firepower. Hoyland's speed and strength could be crucial in breaking down 20's defense, while Mount's creativity in midfield will help control the tempo of the game. United fans will be eager to see how these returning players integrate as the team looks to start their European campaign on a high note at Old Trafford. A win would not only boost confidence, but also set the tone for a busy and competitive season ahead. Meanwhile, yesterday, young defender Lenny Yoro shared his thoughts on Manchester United, revealing he was surprised by the club's size and atmosphere. Manchester United as a club is bigger than I expected, I don't know if I was expecting this," Yoro said. He went on to praise the passionate fans and the iconic Old Trafford Stadium, saying, Fans, the stadium, everything is good. Yoro's comments highlight the global appeal and influence of Manchester United, especially to players who are still discovering the club's rich history and strong support. It's clear that the atmosphere at Manchester United has made a big impression on the young player. In other news, Nusser Mazraoui recently shared the reasons behind his move to Manchester United from Bayern Munich. The Moroccan right-back felt it was time for a change. Although he was comfortable at Bayern, he believed he could feel even better at a new club. When Manchester United showed interest, Mazraoui didn't hesitate. He said that there's no need to explain why he chose to join such a big club. For him, United offers a fresh challenge, and he's excited to prove himself in the Premier League. Mizrawi's arrival is expected to strengthen United's defense, and fans are eager to see how he performs in the coming matches. In other news, Manchester United reveal first look at potential Old Trafford regeneration. Manchester United have shared the first images of a potential redevelopment plan for Old Trafford. Last month, reports suggested that the club is considering building a brand new 100,000-seat stadium. This project could cost around £2 billion. Experts believe that if this plan goes ahead, it could bring a huge economic boost, adding about £7.3 billion of pounds each year to the United Kingdom economy. The idea of a completely new stadium is being seriously considered over renovating the current Old Trafford. Fans are excited to see what the future holds for the iconic ground. The final decision has not been made yet, but these plans show that Manchester United is aiming for something big. According to The Sun and Sky Sports, the club is heavily leaning towards building the new stadium rather than upgrading Old Trafford. They claim that the current structure would need extensive work 
making a new build the more practical choice in the long run. However, the Manchester Evening News reports that the potential new stadium could include state-of-the-art facilities, enhancing fan experiences, and bringing the stadium in line with some of Europe's best. They also highlight concerns about the disruption to the team and fans if Old Trafford were to be renovated while still in use. Additionally, ESPN adds that Manchester United are consulting with several top architects and construction firms to explore all options. They are reportedly prioritizing sustainability in the new designs, with the goal of reducing the club's carbon footprint. Meanwhile, Sky Sports News points out that the club's decision is also influenced by fan feedback. Manchester United supporters are keen to maintain the historical importance of Old Trafford, and while a new stadium could offer modern amenities, many fans still feel a deep connection to the current ground. As discussions continue, the future of Manchester United's home remains a hot topic among fans and football experts alike. Elsewhere, Eric Ten Hag says his Manchester United squad to face former club FC Twente in the Europa League will be the same as that which drew 0-0 at Crystal Palace on Saturday. That means the Reds will be without Victor Lindelof, Tyrell Malaysia, Luke Shaw, and Lenny Yoro for Wednesday's reunion with the club Ten Hag, represented on 234 occasions as a player. While Lindelof and Malaysia have resumed some work at Carrington over the past week, and Yoro is a longer-term concern, there has been little update on Shaw in recent weeks. Luke hasn't played for United since 18 February, with his 2023-24 domestic season curtailed by injury and a calf problem keeping him on the sidelines so far this term. The boss was asked about the England left-back after sharing the news about having an unchanged squad, and he replied that he hoped to see Luke back in action before October's international break. I think it's probably before the break, but I can't say I'm 100% sure, Ten Hag said during his press conference, before the Europa League meeting at Old Trafford. The plan is just to be back before, but as I say, I can't say this 100% for sure. It could also be shortly after the break. After 20's visit to Old Trafford, we host Tottenham Hotspur in the Premier League this Sunday. There's another European fixture on the calendar to start October, with United in Portugal to play FC Porto before we travel to Aston Villa ahead of the next set of national team fixtures. Meanwhile, Manchester United continue their pursuit of a young left-back to strengthen the squad, with the January transfer window approaching fast. Among the profiles explored is Bournemouth's highly rated Milos Kerkez, a young Hungarian defender who caught United's eye. However, securing his services will not come easy, as Bournemouth have set a high price tag for the 19-year-old. Reports suggest that the Cherries are demanding close to 40 millions of pounds, making any potential move a costly affair for United. Kerkez, who joined Bournemouth from AZ Alkmaar last summer, has quickly adapted to the Premier League and has shown promise as one of the league's up-and-coming defenders. His pace, tackling ability, and attacking runs down the left flank have made him an attractive option for several clubs, with United among those closely monitoring his progress. Another name that has surfaced in United's left-back search is Bayern Munich's Alfonso Davies, widely regarded as one of the best in his position. Davies, who has been a key figure for Bayern Munich over the past few seasons, would undoubtedly be a dream signing for Manchester United. However, the chances of securing the Canadian international appear slim. The expectation is that Davies is likely to join Real Madrid on a free transfer next summer, with talks reportedly progressing between the player and the Spanish giants. For United, the left-back position has been a challenging area in recent times. With Luke Shaw sidelined due to injury and Tyrell Malaysia also struggling with fitness issues, the Red Devils have been forced to look for reinforcements. Despite efforts to bring in quality in this department, finding the right player at the right price remains tricky. In the search for a new left-back, Manchester United will need to weigh their options carefully, balancing quality and financial considerations. Whether they opt for a promising talent like Milos Kerkez or set their sights elsewhere, it is clear that reinforcing the left-back position will be a priority in the near future. As the January window nears, 
fans will be eager to see if United make any decisive moves to strengthen their defense. For now, the club continues to explore its options, with Kirkes and Davies standing out as intriguing possibilities. However, the road to securing either player could be steep, with financial hurdles and competition from other clubs standing in the way. In other news, Manchester United's Europa League journey for the 2024-25 season kicks off this Wednesday evening with a match against FC Twente from the Netherlands at Old Trafford. Although United couldn't secure a win in their last game against Crystal Palace, there have been some positive signs since the international break in September. The team has recorded convincing wins against Southampton and Barnsley. A big plus has been the return of key players from injury, with Rasmus Hoyland coming back to fitness and appearing as a substitute in the Crystal Palace match. Mason Mount, another important player, was also on the bench in that game. Both Hoyland and Mount could be ready to start this week as manager Eric Ten Hag prepares to face FC Twente, a club he played for over 200 times during his career. Additionally, defender Victor Lindelof looks close to returning, as he has rejoined training with the rest of the squad. Tyrell Malaysia also took part in the warm-up session at Carrington last Friday, signaling his progress. Malaysia is one of three left-backs registered in the squad for the Europa League group stage. He is joined by Luke Shaw, who hasn't played yet this season due to a calf injury, and 17-year-old Harry Amass, a promising young player. Four of United's summer signings will be hoping to make their Europa League debut for the club this week. However, Lenny Yoro is still recovering from a foot injury he suffered during the preseason tour. Despite this, the young French defender is part of the squad for the new format of the Europa League, which features eight matches and runs until January. As United prepares for the match against FC 20, fans will be hoping to see their team start this campaign with a win and continue building momentum. With key players returning from injury and new signings eager to make their mark, there is a sense of optimism around the club as they head into the Europa League campaign. Eric Ten Hag will be keen to guide United to a strong start in the competition, especially considering his deep connection to FC Twente, where he spent several years as a player. United's squad depth could play a crucial role in this match, with competition for starting positions heating up. The presence of young talents like Harry Amass, alongside seasoned professionals player like Casemiro, shows the blend of experience and youth that Ten Hag has at his disposal. The manager will need to strike the right balance, especially with important Premier League fixtures on the horizon. FC Twente will be a tough opponent for Manchester United, known for their energetic, attacking style. United's defense must remain sharp, especially with Lindelof and Malaysia potentially returning from injury. Shaw's experience could also prove vital as the season progresses. In attack, fans will hope for big performances from Rasmus Hoyland and Mason Mount. Hodgland's speed and strength could trouble 20's defense, while Mount's creativity in midfield will be key. With the new eight-game format, a strong start is essential. Eric Ten Hag will see this home fixture as a chance to gain momentum and set the tone for United's Europa League campaign. In other news, media speculation over Marcus Rashford's omission from Manchester United's starting lineup against Crystal Palace has made Eric Ten Hag really nervous, journalist Fabrizio Romano has revealed. The Dutch tactician's decision to leave the 26-year-old out of his first 11 to face the Eagles on Saturday was questioned by fans and pundits with Sky Sports analyst Jamie Redknapp wondering whether something had happened behind the scenes to prompt it. During the post-match press conference, Ten Hag revealed the decision was purely rotational and suggested it was crazy to infer any signs of Rashford being dropped from the starting 11 for the Premier League encounter. A day after the 0-0 stalemate at Selhurst Park, Romano took to his YouTube channel to shed more light on the situation at Man United and Ten Hag's decision to bench the in-form attacker. Romano, speaking on his YouTube show, revealed that nothing really happened between Rashford and Ten Hag before the Crystal Palace game, as the decision was solely rotational, with three games to play in seven days. He said that, at Man United, when they saw those comments in public, in important media before the game, they were quite surprised, because really nothing happened. They made that decision for Marcus Rashford because they wanted to rotate. They wanted the players to be fresh. They wanted to change a bit. 
also with three games in one week. And so this was the idea, but there was never any problem, never any issue. So all these suggestions made Eric Ten Hag really, really nervous. He didn't accept that. I can guarantee that also internally, Manchester United, they confirmed the same. So it's not just the manager or staff's point of view, also the club's point of view is that Rashford didn't do anything wrong. Otherwise, he was not going to be part of the squad. Rashford had been in impressive form recently, scoring in United's 3-0 win over Southampton and netting a brace against Barnsley in their midweek League Cup 7-0 victory. The 26-year-old has started every other game this campaign, including a win on the opening day against Fulham and defeats to Brighton and Liverpool. Alejandro Garnacho and Ahmad Diallo were chosen to start on the wings by Ten Hag on Saturday, as the Red Devils were held to a goalless draw on Saturday, with goalkeepers Dean Henderson and Andre Onana making key saves to keep both sides level. Following Ahmad Diallo's impressive start to the season, it's revealed that Man United now have three super important wingers, and Eric Ten Hag's idea on Saturday was to rotate for the Premier League encounter. Eric Ten Hag says, I can confirm this is the case, that this was a rotation, so a technical decision, but not in a negative way. Marcus Rashford was part of the rotation because they have three super important players, plus obviously they have Anthony, but in terms of important starters at Manchester United, they have Diallo, Garnacho, and Rashford, and Eric Ten Hag is rotating them. So Rashford started on Tuesday, and the idea of the staff of Eric Ten Hag was to change for the Crystal Palace game. So this is why Rashford didn't play. Rashford entered the second half on the pitch. So Rashford didn't have any problem with Ten Hag. Rashford didn't do anything wrong. Rashford didn't have any problems with his teammates. Rashford didn't have any problem with the staff. Fan favorite Diallo has started the season in fine form, playing in all seven of United's games so far and scoring once in the Premier League in 338 minutes of action. The Ivorian winger was not given many opportunities last season and was rarely seen in the starting 11, before netting a memorable winner against Liverpool in the FA Cup quarter-final and producing strong performances towards the end of the campaign prompting Ten Hag to keep faith in him at the start of this term. According to a report from the Manchester Evening News, United are now expected to offer a new long-term contract to Diallo in the coming months, as he has less than 12 months left on his current deal. Meanwhile, Manchester United is leading a massive project to regenerate Trafford Park, with plans to build a new 100,000-seater stadium at its centre. According to a report by Oxford Economics, this ambitious plan could add 7.3 billions of pounds a year to the UK economy. The project would create around 92,000 new jobs and deliver 17,000 new homes to the area. It would also attract about 1.8 million visitors every year. This redevelopment is expected to bring significant growth and benefits, not only to Manchester, but to the entire country. The plan shows Manchester United's commitment to both the football community and the local area, aiming to bring new opportunities and development for the future. In other news, Manchester United's senior squad members were back at Carrington for a training session on Monday. Key players like Casemiro, Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford, Harry Maguire, Diogo Dalo, Lisandro Martinez, Johnny Evans, and Christian Eriksen took part as they prepared for their upcoming Europa League match against FC Twente on Wednesday. Alongside the senior stars, young talents such as Kabi Mainu, Alejandro Garnacho, Ahmad Diallo, and Toby Collier also joined the training. This mix of experienced and young players worked together under the watchful eye of the coaching staff. New signings, Joshua Zerxi, Matthijs De Ligt, Nusser Mazraoui, and Manuel Ugarte were seen training with the team, adding fresh energy and excitement to the squad. With everyone working hard in training, Manchester United looks ready to face FC Twente with a strong and focused team. During the session, the team focused on tactical drills, with emphasis on ball possession and high pressing, preparing for the intensity expected from FC Twente. The players also worked on set-piece routines, with Bruno Fernandes and Christian Eriksen delivering pinpoint crosses, while defenders like Lisandro Martinez and Harry Maguire 
practiced aerial clearances. The attacking players, including Rashford and Garnacho, were involved in shooting drills, sharpening their finishing skills. Meanwhile, the new signings integrated into the training with ease, displaying their abilities in both defensive and attacking scenarios. Manuel Ugarte was particularly impressive in midfield, showcasing his strong tackles and ball distribution. Overall, the session was intense but productive, with the team looking united and ready for the midweek challenge. Fans are eagerly anticipating how these players, both new and experienced, will perform in the Europa League clash. With the blend of senior players, young talents, and exciting new signings, United is gearing up for an important fixture and aiming for a strong performance. In other news, Manchester United are reportedly keeping tabs on highly rated Red Bull Salzburg midfielder Oscar Gluck as a long-term replacement for skipper Bruno Fernandes. The Portugal international turned 30 earlier this month, and it appears that the Red Devils are already plotting who will eventually replace him amid links to 20-year-old playmaker Gluck. The Israel International has been an outstanding presence at Salzburg since joining them for £5.8 million from Maccabi Tel Aviv in January 2023. An incredible run of form last season saw Gluck notch nine goals and add 18 assists in all competitions, leading to other Premier League clubs joining United in the race for his signature. However, Fussball News states the Old Trafford outfit are considering making an offer for the player, although it will more likely be next summer than the January window. Salzburg do have a proven track record of selling prodigious young talents for the right price, and Gluck could be made available if the right offer is presented as well. The report also adds that there is every chance the attacking midfielder will entertain a move to the Premier League, given that he has all the attributes to be a success in England. Gluck who played three times for his country at the Paris Olympics and scored in a draw with Paraguay, has notched 23 goals in 101 senior career appearances to date. The talented attacker was also part of the Israel side, which reached the semi-finals of the European Under-21 Championship in July 2023, where they were beaten 3-0 by eventual winners England. Speaking after that match, he revealed that eventually moving to the Premier League was something very much on his radar, having been wowed by England internationals Curtis Jones and Angel Gomes at that tournament, and in the semi-final in particular. Gluck said, It was special. The best I saw there, it was Curtis Jones and Angel Gomes. Both were playing as sixes, and I think, against us, maybe they lost the ball once all game. They moved the ball, their positioning was good, they controlled the game, every minute. We didn't touch the ball a lot. We were more defensive. But to see them, Premier League players, this is the level you want to go to, to get to. It was a good experience. In terms of his playing style, Glock been described as a player with a deft touch who easily finds pockets of space in between defensive and midfield lines and did not look out of place during his six appearances for Salzburg in the Champions League last season. In other United news, the Red Devils are reportedly ready to make a fresh bid to sign Atalanta midfielder Ederson, with Dan Ashworth stepping up his plans to find a replacement for Casemiro, and how much the Red Devils will need to pay for a January deal has come to light. According to TNT Sports Brazil, the 25-year-old is still very much in their sights after a failed summer bid for the player, with his midweek Champions League outing against Arsenal only reinforcing Ashworth's wish to sign him. Competition for his services, though, will be tough with Newcastle, Barcelona, and Inter Milan listed as candidates for his signature, while his price tag has also been revealed. On the other side, Dan Ashworth, Omar Barada, Jason Wilcox, and Sir Jim Ratcliffe will be the key figures in deciding whether Eric Ten Hag loses his job at Man United, sources have told Football Insider. Ineos and Ratcliffe have taken control of the footballing decisions at Old Trafford, but the sporting director Ashworth, CEO Barada, and technical director Wilcox will each have a say in the manager's future. It was their decision in the summer to back Ten Hag with a new contract following their FA Cup victory against Manchester City, 
and they remain confident in their decision. Sources say the chief decision makers at United will not rush into any rash calls and are willing to allow the boss more time to get results out of his team. However, results will dictate their decision and their hand could be forced if Ten Hag fails to get a tune out of his team in the coming weeks and months. Following the 3-0 defeat to Liverpool at Old Trafford, pressure on Ten Hag's position spiked once more, with many fans left calling for him to lose his job. Recent big victories against Southampton and Brentford have eased the tension in the crowd, and the United executives are hoping the team will continue their good form. Having made the decision to stick with Ten Hag during the summer, there is a reluctance to see the manager dismissed so early in the season, unless they are forced into a change. However, many supporters at Old Trafford feel he should have lost his job, and have continued their calls for his head this season. United have taken six points from their opening four Premier League games this season, with wins against Fulham and Southampton, after defeats against Brighton and Liverpool. United's goal for the season is to achieve Champions League qualification through the league, and Ten Hag has been backed to make it happen. However, if they find themselves on course for a similarly disappointing season as last time out, the major decision-makers could be forced to consider their options.